know, if you've been on this channel long enough, you know that I have a hatred for this man right here, Goldberg. Some people have been asking, why is Go why you don't like Goldberg? What's wrong with Goldberg? Goldberg was goaded back in the day. In Jesus' name, fuck this nigga. Hear me and hear me good, nigga. I'm here to double down. That shit is a, a two pack of ass. <laughs> the fuck are you talking about? That shit stinks. I don't give a fuck how you feel about Goldberg. Goldberg is the worst fucking wrestler to ever fucking exist. Nigga was unprofessional. This nigga was barely even, this nigga was barely even in a stable state of mind during a lot of his matches. The things I've heard about Goldberg in the ring is terrible. This is arguably one of the worst unsafe wrestlers I've ever seen. But everybody want to sit up here and act like this nigga was the greatest fucking thing to ever happen to wrestling. No, no, no. Fuck this nigga. Fuck this nigga, bro. Don't don't ever tell me that this man was the best thing to ever happened in wrestling. In Jesus name. Fuck this nigga. And I stand on it. Fuck this nigga. But let's see why Goldberg is one of the most hated men in wrestling. Goldberg is one of the most controversial figures in wrestling. His intensity made him an instant superstar, but not everyone was impressed. He was pushed to the top of WCW without paying his dues, and he clearly lacked the in-ring skills of his peers in the locker room. Some fans loved his explosive style, but others saw him as just a one-trick pony, and as his career went on, his weaknesses became harder to ignore. This is the story of how Goldberg became one of the most hated men in wrestling. Goldberg didn't enter the world of professional wrestling because of a deep-rooted passion for the business. Goldberg's passion was for football, but that was a dream that got cut short due to an injury. With his NFL aspirations in the toilet, it was just luck that his next career move came into focus. He was working out at a gym in Atlanta when he was spotted by Lex Luger and Sting. They were impressed with his work ethic and his size, and they suggested that he train to become a pro wrestler at the WCW power plant. At the power plant, they trained him as quickly as possible, and then in September 1997, he made his debut on Nitro. He started in the way that he'd continue in a squash match where he finished Hugh Morris in less than three minutes. As Goldberg embarked on his now infamous winning streak, it's undeniable that the fans loved him to begin with. He burst onto the scene in WCW just when the fans needed a hero. As the New World Order and other heels were dominating at the time, there was a lack of strong baby faces on the roster, but Goldberg was the remedy. When we look at Goldberg's entire career, this was the pinnacle. But that's mostly because his many weaknesses as a wrestler were completely hidden. The matches were short and all he needed to do was perform his routine and then he could go home. But a run-in with Steven Regal exposed the cracks in his act. This was a big change from the quick 90-second matches that Goldberg had been used to. He froze in the middle of the ring and he didn't know how to adapt. Regal tried to salvage the situation by guiding him through the match, but it was a mess. When the men went backstage, producer Eric Bischoff exploded in anger about how the match played out. But Regal pointed out that he could only do so much if his opponent wasn't able to perform. Thank in you. interviews, Regal has said that Goldberg took responsibility at the time for messing the match up. But many years later, Goldberg disagreed with Regal's account of the situation. And this is why I do not fuck with Goldberg. 
You are the problem, bro. If you got into the ring, if you got into the gym more, if you got into the fucking, if you worked on your craft more often, updated your move set a little bit, just baby steps, just baby steps. Learn a learn a suplex here, a DDT here, a hip toss here. Learn how to chain grapple. You know what I'm saying? The little baby steps. But nah. I'm not the problem. He's the problem. I'm the big star around here. And this is why I did not fuck with Goldberg. Even claiming that he roughed him up during the match. And no matter what he says, the debacle with Regal showed him up big time. But as he played through the roster to become the world heavyweight champion, it didn't really matter, at least not in the short term. While better wrestlers like Chris Jericho and Booker T were getting nowhere in WCW, Goldberg was on top. He was even ahead of Hollywood Hogan and the rest of the NWO. Jericho was obviously being misused by 1998. He was funny, charismatic and one of the most talented wrestlers on the roster. He was doing everything he possibly could to get himself noticed. Hilariously, Jericho started calling out Goldberg during his promos, specifically when he wasn't in the building, and started claiming that he was scared of him. All Jericho wanted in reality was to be squashed by Goldberg on pay-per-view. He didn't want a 10-minute match with him, and it would have been a fun way for the winning streak to continue, but Goldberg wasn't having any of it. In an early display of how thin-skinned he is, he cornered Jericho backstage and told him that he wasn't happy with being mocked and he didn't want to work with so-called comedy characters. Jericho did try and explain that the angle was supposed to build towards a big payoff where Goldberg would ultimately destroy him, but he wouldn't listen. And so they had no choice but to drop the angle. When Goldberg joined WWE in 2003, the tension with Jericho quickly resurfaced, which led to a backstage fight. Goldberg had been making derogatory comments about Jericho, which led to Jericho confronting him. Despite Goldberg's size advantage, Jericho managed to take him down and get him in a front face lock. The fight was eventually broken up by the other wrestlers, but Goldberg definitely came out of the scuffle looking weak. But let's go back to 1998, and the golden era of Goldberg's career was about to come to an end. It was Starcade in December 1998, where Kevin Nash beat him for the world title and ended the winning streak at the same time. In just three seconds, he became just another wrestler on the roster, and not a very good one either, and he generally got swept up in WCW's terrible booking at the time. But a feud with Bret Hart did look promising. If anyone could drag a good match out of Goldberg, then surely it was the Hitman. They eventually faced each other in 1999 for the World Heavyweight Championship, and it was here that we saw just how careless Goldberg could be in the ring. He managed to kick Brett full force in the head, giving him a devastating concussion that would go on to end his legendary career. I gotta admit it! I did not see this coming! In a million years! I did not see this coming! Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. I, I, I can't. What am I gonna say? Dummy. Yeah. Yeah. 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 Why? This, this is the guy y'all defend. I I just want y'all to know that this is the guy that y'all defend. And he ended one of arguably the best wrestlers 
of of his era career with his recklessness but y'all still love this guy right this is still one of the goats to y'all right fuck out of here fuck out of here. if you a goldberg fan i feel sorry for you as a person i i i deeply do i i think something is clearly wrong with you many fans have never forgiven goldberg for this reckless moment and neither is brett himself in an interview with steve austin he said i always knew what i was doing and I would hurt myself before I ever hurt another wrestler. And I just wish, I really wish some of the wrestlers that I worked with, especially at the end, like Goldberg. Goldberg, to me, was one of the most unprofessional wrestlers there ever was in the business. I mean, to get, to, for Bill Goldberg to be in the Hall of Fame, he hurt everybody he worked with. He might as well wrestle a real gorilla. He was the most dangerous guy to work with. He hurt everybody he worked with. I remember Kurt Henning being in pain all the time from the matches they had. And even when I worked with Bill, I always think well, the last words I said to Bill before we went out and had that match where he injured and ended my career, I said, Bill, whatever you do out there, don't hurt me. We'll do whatever you want. We can do anything. We Just don't go nuts. It was around this time that the WWF was parodying Goldberg with their very own version in Goldberg. It was just Vince McMahon poking fun at the somewhat ridiculous nature of Bill's character, especially the entrance and the winning streak, as Gilberg went on a losing streak in the WWF. Instead of taking it on the chin or just ignoring it, Goldberg reacted angrily. I wanted to cut his head off, and then I wanted to cut everyone's head off that came up with the idea. You can take it a number of ways. I took it violently in the beginning. Goldberg's reputation for having a thin skin was cemented even further in the year 2000 when he had a run-in with Triple H. Hunter had allegedly made comments about Goldberg's lack of experience and how injury-prone he was before saying that he would be worthless in the WWF. A few months later, both men were in attendance at a press event Suddenly, Goldberg approached Triple H and went off on a curse-filled tirade against him, apparently threatening to rip his face off. Triple H responded in a very public way during the first season of Tough Enough in 2001, where he went on a rant against Goldberg after one of the rookies said that he was his favourite wrestler. If your biggest idol is a guy that's been in the business for about a year, he got everything handed to him, can't have a match longer than four minutes, has not wrestled for more than three months straight mm. because every three months he's got a hangnail, mm. got a toothache, got a tummy ache, and he has to take time off. Then where does that mentally put that person? But it was when he arrived in WWE that Goldberg was truly exposed as being a fraud for the entire world to see. After all, this was the land where main event superstars were expected to cut compelling promos and wrestle 20-minute main events, and Goldberg had no chance of being able to do either of those things competently. They put him in a feud with Hollywood Rock. The fans started to jeer Goldberg and boo him relentlessly. The 13-minute match between the men at Backlash felt like half an hour. It was so bad. And even as a heel, The Rock's pure charisma left Bill looking like a chump. WWE tried to get him back on track by giving him a winning streak, but that went out the window when it came to a feud with his old enemy, Triple H. He did manage to beat Hunter for the World Heavyweight title, but his three-month reign as champion was total crap. He only defended the belt against a few opponents, Triple H regained the title at Armageddon and any aura that Goldberg had left had just totally evaporated. His matches with Hunter were really bad for the most part because they just didn't gel well together in the ring. Triple H wrestled long, methodical matches on pay-per-view, which was completely at odds with Goldberg's style, if you can call it a style anyway. His final appearance during this first run in WWE was against Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania 20, with Stone Cold as the guest referee. Both he and Lesnar were leaving WWE right after the match, and they both 
totally phoned it in. The crowd at Madison Square Garden booed both men and they only lit up for Austin. And Goldberg left the company under a dark cloud. He'd fallen out with Vince McMahon because he didn't want to work live events, which caused McMahon to accuse him of not being a team player and of being lazy. And that was the last time that he was seen in WWE for nearly 13 years. It was his inclusion as a bonus character in a WWE video game that brought him back into contact with the company and he and Brock Lesnar reignited their feud via social media. On WWE TV, Paul Heyman challenged Goldberg to a match against Brock Lesnar face to face. The match took place at the 2016 Survivor Series and to the surprise of everyone, Goldberg beat Lesnar in just 1 minute and 26 seconds. Bunch of bullshit. It was a blessing that they kept this so short and Goldberg did get a decent nostalgia pop from the fans, which would have been fine if this was just a one-off appearance, but it wasn't. He entered the Royal Rumble in January, eliminating Lesnar from the match, and then annoyingly, he killed Kevin Owens' main event push at Fastlane by squashing him for the Universal Championship. Garbage. This was so frustrating. Owens was having a really entertaining run at the time, only for this dickhead to come back and completely derail his momentum. Damn. Brock Lesnar vs Goldberg for the Universal title was set up for WrestleMania 33, and by now, the fans were already sick and tired of Goldberg. During the match at WrestleMania, they booed him and sided with Lesnar. Thankfully, this one was kept short too, with Lesnar beating him for the belt in less than five minutes. But even during such a short match, it was clear that Oldberg was totally past it. At Super Showdown, we ended up with the utter disaster that was the Undertaker match. Goldberg idiotically managed to run headlong into a ring post, concussing himself and therefore botching the rest of the match. It would have been funny if it wasn't so pathetic. Oh my God. Despite Goldberg being a decade past his sell-by date, Vince McMahon kept on booking him over the younger, better talent on the roster. Bray Wyatt was back on track as one of WWE's hottest superstars in 2020, but Goldberg squashed him in just seconds for the Universal Championship. He lost the title to Braun Strowman at WrestleMania 36, and then after a nine month hiatus, he came back again, this time losing to Drew McIntyre and Bobby Lashley in awful feuds that nobody asked for. The match with Lashley was one of the worst matches of the year, it was absolutely atrocious. In February 2022, Goldberg made his final return to date this time challenging Roman Reigns to a match for the Universal title. Yes, it was crap, but thankfully, it only lasted six minutes, Thank God. with Reigns retaining the title As you in the end. He's been gone for a couple of years now, and good riddance to him. Thank with you. Triple H in charge, let's hope he never comes back. But that won't stop him from opening his stupid fat mouth, the sad old man recently took issue with Asuka beating his fake winning streak. Well, a girl beat my winning streak. Asuka is her name, some Japanese girl, and they touted her as being the one to have the longest winning streak, and it just so happened that that culminated when I got there. It's pathetic comments like that that prove that Goldberg will remain one of wrestling's most hated men long into his retirement. Thanks. Like, let's keep it real, though. Oscar runs circles around Goldberg, so I'm not mad that Oscar. Matter of fact, what the fuck is going? Where where has Oscar been? I ain't seen Oscar since uh, WrestleMania. Hopefully, she all right. Hopefully, Vin, uh, no, I just said Vince McMahon. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Triple H. I hope Triple H is cooking something up for her when she come back, because we we definitely need some Oscar right now. We need something in the women's division, because. The women's division ain't it right now. But, um, yeah, man.
Goldberg, one of the most hated men in wrestling. Absolutely deserves it. He deserves every fucking thing. He, he deserves all the hate. He deserves all the fucking hate. And I, I'm here for it. I, I don't fuck with Goldberg. I hate Goldberg with a passion. Um, I think he's one of the worst wrestlers to ever fucking step into a ring. He has no move set. He injures people. He's a fucking dumbass. And with comments about Oscar, the way he just talked about Oscar, I'm, I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know. I didn't know he made those comments about Oscar, but you can't be mad at someone for basically having uh, someone who's actually fucking talented in the ring to actually be a fucking. Nah, Chief, you can't be mad at somebody that's actually talented at wrestling to beat your little weak ass winning streak that you went on in the 90s of all places. Fuck out of here, dog. Fuck out of here, dog. Fuck out of here. Stay, stay your ass retired, dog. You ain't coming back to this ring. I hope AEW don't pick you up. I hope no wrestling promotion picks you up for, for a cash grab. I hope you stay in the shadows where, you, where the fuck you belong. Old ass, bitch made ass. Ball head ass nigga, bro. Stay your punk ass where you at, dog. Nobody's thinking about you. Nobody cares about you. You are the worst fucking wrestler of all fucking time. Fuck out of here. But anyway, so that's just gonna about do it for this one. Let me know what y'all think down in the comment section below. I'll get back to you till then. Peace out.